Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, I wanted to start giving you some feedback on the sonic differences between my Marantz AV receiver, which is the brand new Cinema 50, and the Emotiva RMC1, which is an AV processor. And there are, of course, some obvious differences between these two different products here. Of course, one's an AV receiver, that's the Marantz, and that is uh, capable of doing a, a 7.4.4 uh, situation. So seven base layer speakers, four on the ceiling, and four subwoofers uh, independently controlled, whereas the Emotiva processors are 16 channel processors. Uh, I think it comes back to, you know, you can have up to three subwoofers on that Emotiva. Currently, the, the Marantz is an Odyssey-based uh, product, although it's gonna be upgradable to Dirac uh, around March 2023, and the Emotiva is currently supporting Dirac. So there's some differences clearly there, and of course, the last one is price. When you get a receiver, you get a very value-driven uh, product because the amplifiers are built in. You got nine channels of amplification with the Cinema 50. And so that saves you a lot of money. For $2,500, you get essentially the processor and nine channels of amplification. And with the Emotiva, there's no channels of amplification. It's a processor only uh, there. So while you've got more channels of processing, you've got to be by that much more uh, amplifiers to fully leverage its capabilities. That out of the way, th there is ways to do apples to apples comparisons with these. In fact, you can treat the Marantz receiver as a processor just by configuring uh, it to turn off the internal amplifiers. And in fact, we can even test this so that uh, we're running it through the same external amplifiers with both products. And that becomes more of a fair comparison of the processing capabilities between the Marantz AV receiver and the Emotiva processor. And that's what we did. We have these Emotiva amplifiers. Uh, the front three channels are monoblocks. These are the XPA1 uh, uh, monoblocks. Uh, Gen 2, so these have been discontinued, but they're still serving us well. In fact, with our four-ohm speakers, it's capable of uh, putting out about a 1,000 watts uh, there if, if, if you really hit that hard. Uh, so more than ample uh, power to drive these, and, and so uh, the amplifier shouldn't be the, the, the problem here. Uh, this will, will be able to really you know, know the differences between the receiver from Marantz and the processor from uh, Emotiva. And the way we've gone about this is we have an AB switch here. And this one's pretty good because I can switch between an RCA input and an XLR balanced input or, uh, or even a, a second XLR balanced input, but we only have two sources here. Of course, the Marantz is only putting out an unbalanced signal uh, with RCA connections. So that will go on the RCA part of the AB switch. And then the Emotiva uh, is all balanced connections and that we can put on the other. And then when we output this, the Emotiva amps take balanced or unbalanced. But in this case, we'll, we'll drive our front two speakers with this on a balanced connection on the output of the AB switch. And then we can just switch between the Marantz and the Emotiva. The other thing that we thought of doing here is like, well, do we turn the room calibration on or off? Uh, we said, well, we'll try it both ways. Uh, do we do it with subwoofers on or off? Well, we can try it both ways. When I finally got this set up, I gave this a common source. This was an Apple TV feeding both processors uh, simultaneously, both the receiver and the processor simultaneously, and truly the same source, switching A to B. And 
before, this was the first time I had listened to the Emotiva RMC one. I had already set up and started playing with the Marantz Cinema 50. You know, we got these about the same time. These came within a couple days of each other. And I felt like the Marantz Cinema 50 was lacking. Now here I'm coming from a vintage Sony TAE 9000 ES processor. Uh, that's over 20 years old, or at least the design is. And I felt like the Marantz was a step back from that. If you just take two channel, the front speakers, and just put it into stereo mode, I thought that the old Sony did. And this was just by memory. Now, I should OAB test the old processor, but I haven't done that yet. But from my memory, I didn't think that the Cinema 50 was living up to the same uh, experience as I got with the Sony processor that's 20 years old. I did think it was quite amazing when I turned on Atmos for the first time and I could hear the ceiling channels. That's something I never had heard in this room before. Uh, so that was wonderful. But I just thought the sound quality didn't live up to what I was used to. So I hooked up the Emotiva RMC1, and this is before I even went through the direct calibration. In fact, I really hadn't gone through much of the setup at all, and all I did is played the same source, and I switched it from A to B. I said, that's what I was lacking. It came alive, a whole a veil of was removed and I never thought the Morant sounded bad, but I, I knew my room could do more. I knew the speakers in my room and my amplifiers were capable of putting out more. And I felt like it was held back. I didn't think it was clear enough. And when I did that AB switch to the Emotiva RMC one, this is, this is what I was expecting. In fact, it sounded better than my 20 year old processor. So I felt like I finally got the sonic quality that I was seeking by going to the Emotiva. Now, of course, this comes at more cost. You know, if you take the, the RMC1 processors and then have to add in channels of amplification up to 11, in my case, because I have a 7.2.4 system. So I have seven base layer, four on the ceiling. You're going to pay $37.50 for the RMC1. Let's say you do it with basics amplifiers. You're going to at least spend $1,200 on those 11 channels. You'll buy a, a six channel and a five channel or some combination to come up with 11 and it's going to cost you over $1,200. So the, the RMC one plus the, the amplifiers is going to cost around $5,000. Maybe it'll be less light than that because Emotiva off, often has sales, but the Marantz cinema 50 is $2,500, half the cost. And you have all the amplification built in. So, um, yeah, that's something to figure out. Uh, of course, the Cinema 50 is only nine channels, so I guess I could drop down a couple of channels. Uh, so if I was going to equal nine, that well, it's still going to come out about the same. If I do an A5 and an A4, it's still going to be around $1,200. Although, yeah. Uh, the cheapest way to go about it for an uh, Emotiva processor is the XMC2, which is $2,400. So you add $1,200 worth of amplifiers to that. That's uh, just over $3,600. Uh, but, but you need to think $3,600. Now that is close to the Marantz Cinema 40, which is yet to be released. That's $3,500. So for $100 more, I can move from a, a Marantz Cinema 40 to an XMC2 with external amplifiers for $100 more. 
just to put it in perspective here. Now, the Cinema 40 is said to have better internals made in Japan versus Vietnam of the 50 that I have. So it should be better than the Cinema 50, the Cinema 40. But is it, is it going to be at the same caliber as the Emotiva? Now you say, John, you're now you're comparing an XMC2, which you don't have, to your RMC1. You're right. But the first front three channels of an XMC2 are fully differential, just like the RMC1. So that, I believe, should be similar. The difference is, is on the rest of the channels, you don't have fully balanced on an XMC2. If you want fully balanced, you can go halfway in between and go an RMC1L, and that's going to be $3,000 plus your amplifiers. That brings it up to around $4,250 for a package uh, with an RMC1L. And the only thing you're given up between the L and the standard RMC1 is the ability to expand to more channels or have those input modules for the phono or for more balanced inputs. So, uh, yeah, but that takes you up to $4,275 on the, on the price there. So, is there other ways, you know, you can, you can, um, you can go about this, perhaps? People buying the Marantz AV receiver often have an upgrade path where they upgrade their amplifiers to go external. And that gets them an improvement in sonic quality, especially if you're running very dynamic um, content like in movies. Uh, where you need a lot of extra power or you have inefficient speakers and you really need something more than what's built in. And that's good. But I almost feel like the processor separate going to that Emotiva gave as much, maybe even more of an improvement than going from the internal amps of the Marantz to external. Of course, that's an improvement. I've did that A-B comparison before as well. So what are your other options? Well, you could, unfortunately, you can't take the output of an uh, um, Emotiva and feed it into an existing A-B receiver. Most of them today do not have multi-channel inputs. Uh, the Cinema 50 doesn't. So you're forced... Um, if those amplifiers are internal, they can only be used with the internal processor to the Cinema 50. And what I've been using the internal amplifiers for are the, are the ceiling channels, not my fronts, not my base layer surrounds. I suppose I could do that, but again, it's a moot issue because there's no uh, 7.1 input to the Cinema 50. So to upgrade the Cinema 50 processor, I really end up throwing away all those internal amplifiers, not using them. So it brings up a very interesting debate. You know, do you, do you jump into a, you know, these fully loaded systems like the 7.2.4 system I have? It took me over 20 years to get to the point where I could afford and have this large of a system. If you're just starting off fresh, that's a big investment. And the Cinema 50 represents a really high value. But then to take that jump up and get a better sounding processor, you now also have to get those external amps. That really increases your, your investment into the system. Uh, so you're jump, jumping from $2,500, potentially all the way up to to $5,000. Uh, but doing it with an XMC2 and uh, something like the basic amplifier, uh, you could do it for about $1,000 more and have separates. So these are some of the trade-offs you have to make. I was just, you know, um, it was very clear. And in fact, I repeated the test, the A-B test with my seven-year-old. And I said, listen to this. Now listen to this. 
What do you like better? And without hesitation, he picked the Emotiva. Right? And he, didn't even, he doesn't know what I have here, but he knows what sounds better to him. It was clearer. It was more of a rich experience. It opened up. Uh, it did make a huge difference. Now, I repeated this test after running Dirac. I even reran Odyssey on the Marantz. I've tried it with both front speakers set to large, which Odyssey Force kind of does that for you. But then I set it back to small and see if that made a difference. It really didn't improve this issue. Um, I've tried it with without subwoofers, but very repeatable. The Emotiva sounds better every time. So that's my own assessment. This is purely based off of my own personal listening test. I think if we take it to the next level, we would do um, some REW measurements and try to compare uh, with a um, with the same the same sweeps going into both systems. And I think I'll do that. But uh, yeah, that's for another day. And you know, what's your feeling on this? You know, it unfortunately with this hobby, there isn't always easy choices. All right. Do we stick with the 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 conventional plan of, hey, I'm gonna start my system with a receiver and I'll add external amplifiers later to upgrade my system? Or do we forego all that together and start with a processor and some budget amps and go down that path? What do you think? That feedback would be useful to the right wave audio community. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can go on to www.patreon.com slash ripewave. Um, and we'd love to have you there. Or you can just hit the thanks button and do a one-time donation. Uh, either case, or any case, you can hit the bell on notification so you will be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.